And we're back, Lightroom round three. In this episode, we will be examining the images shot next to the umbrellas. We might actually throw a couple of bonus files in there as well. As always, we will begin in the library module to organize our files, then we'll move over to the development module for some raw editing. Let's get started. All right, friends, welcome back to Lightroom. In this episode, we will be investigating Ashley and the secret umbrellas. We also have a couple of extra bonus files of Ashley at the top of the pavilion. As you can see here, I've already made a bit of a selection for us. A couple of housekeeping notes to begin with. One, if you are new to Lightroom, that is if you have no experience whatsoever, I strongly recommend that you visit premiumlightacademy.com, go to our free tutorial section and take the Lightroom for Beginners tutorial. It provides a comprehensive overview on how to run Lightroom from the ground up. It goes through all the modules, all the buttons, it shows you how all the controls work, how all the folders, how the organization, everything you need to know. This particular lesson, we're going to jump right into the workflow. We're going to hit the gas pedal and we're going to move directly into our editing so you can see how we start to manipulate these files. Furthermore, if you've been skipping around in these lessons and this is the first time you've arrived at Lightroom, be sure to go back and check out the Ashley in the Yellow Dress episode on Lightroom. We take a much more comprehensive tour of the entire software in that lesson as well. All right, so with that said, I really wanna start rocking out on this workflow. Let's begin over here on the left-hand side in our collections. We have a collection that says Ashley Umbrella's first cut. So I've already gone through our massive library of images and I've whittled down the hundred or so frames from these two photo shoots down to these final 12 selections. So we'll be going through these final 12 selections and we're gonna try to whittle this down to about three or four final selections that will get submitted over to Photoshop and that will go through final editing here in Lightroom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new collection. And this is where we'll stash our final images. So this is going to be Ashley Umbrella Final Cut. So this is where we will place the final images that we're getting ready to pick out right now. Okay, so of our 12 images, let's start with number one and get a look. I'm going to scroll through these using the arrow keys on the keyboard. And as you can see, this is from our photo shoot where the restaurant popped up all these beautiful umbrellas. And we only had a couple of minutes to rifle through our frames. So this was a bit of a rush, but we did get really interesting results. And we'll go through those here in just a minute. All right, as I cycle through these first four images, you can see they are in fact quite similar to one another. So I don't really need to pick all four for final editing, but I would like to pick at least two of them. So moving through, I like this image because it's got a nice engaging smile. Ashley's looking right into the camera. She's making contact with the viewer. So this is a really great start. I'm gonna hit the B key and send this image to our quick collection as one of our final selects. When we move over here, this was one of the happy accidents that we talked about in the lesson while we were actually shooting this file. I don't know that Ashley or myself was actually intending to capture this image. It was just one of those images in between the images. But I feel like it's a nice, beautiful, candid moment. She's not really paying attention to the camera. She's having kind of a, a personal moment of self-reflection, and I really like the way it turned out. It is, in fact, different from the previous image that we just selected because she's not, in fact, making eye contact with the camera. So. This one is a keeper as well. Over here, we have one final image. This is actually very similar to the one that we sent to our quick collection already. I like this image, but I think she might be kind of drooping her head down just a little bit too much. This is starting to get borderline sultry and seductive, and I want happy and engaging. So we will probably not select this particular image. All right, moving right along, we have Ashley at the top of the pavilion, and we have a lot of nice images from this selection as well. We have a couple quick little wardrobe changes and a bunch of different selections. So let's get right in here. I like this very first image. This was actually just a test shot. And as you can see, uh, the exposure on her face is a little hot, but this is well within the margins of our raw file. We can bring that back down into normal levels. So I'm gonna hit the B key and add this to our final quick collection. Moving right along, we've got the obligatory smolder looking into the camera, looking very sultry. So we will take this one. And for this image, I really like this image all except for one tiny little thing. If we direct your attention right here to Ashley's smile, it's kind of like, is she smiling with teeth? Is she smiling not with teeth? So we've kind of hit her in a moment in between and I'm not really sure that the viewer is gonna know what to make of this. This almost looks like 
not really a mistake, but it's just a, a matter of rapid firing the camera and capturing a moment in between where she's really nailing her look. And so that kind of tiny little row of teeth that's just starting to perk out kind of makes it so I don't think that this is going to be a keeper. Now we could go into Photoshop and this would be a pretty fun lesson, go into Photoshop and actually make her lips cover her teeth entirely so she does just have a regular smile the way she does in this one. Now this is a full-fledged smile, it's flirty, it's clever, her mouth is totally closed, she's not showing any teeth, she's not showing any half teeth, so this is what I would consider to be a much more complete expression. This one on the other hand, mm, that little half teeth, I, I love everything about this picture, her, the tilt of her head, her hair is kind of flying in the right place, the straps in the back of her dress make this beautiful compositional shape. You can just start to make out one of those really beautiful lanterns over here on the left and then the rest of the lanterns kind of fade off into obscurity into this beautiful creamy bokeh. So I think for the purpose of this lesson, you know what, we will keep this and maybe we'll run this into Photoshop and see if we can get rid of those teeth later on. All right, quick collection, there you go. Over here, this is kind of a nice subtle image. I don't love it. I don't dislike it. It's kind of normal and I think we've shot other stuff that's a little bit better. Probably the same with this one. It's kind of an average smile, average smiling picture, which I mean for Ashley is better than 99% of the people in the world, don't get me wrong, but I think we've shot better work in this tutorial. So we'll move right along. This is a pretty good basic headshot. It's nice and subtle. You can see again where her mouth is almost starting to open to reveal some of those teeth and we're getting dangerously close to that half smile, half not smile thing. But in this case, let's see the next image. She does definitely have a definitive smile. So we'll go ahead and keep the smile. Be key, add to quick collection. And then as we move on to our final frame, she's got a little bit of a wardrobe change and we've got this sort of fun, flirty little coat coming up over her face, which is kind of cool. It's unique. It's different from the rest of the stuff. So let the B key and keep that one as well. So from our original 12 selects, we move into our quick collection and we now have seven files. I think that's probably a pretty good start to start rocking through our Lightroom edits. So I'm going to grab these seven files and I'm gonna drop them into our Ashley Umbrella Final Cut right there. So now they are properly categorized into their correct location. And now let's launch into our editing process. I'm gonna select our first image here and we're gonna go over to the development module so that we have access to our editing tools. And the first thing I noticed about this image is that her face is ever so slightly darker than the background. The background is actually very bright. These umbrellas were starting to get hit by full sunlight, which makes the background brighter than your subject. That's typically not something that you want in an image. If anything, you want your background to be slightly darker than your subject so that your subject kind of pops out. But in this case, we have plenty of information in our raw file and I think we can kind of change this around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually gonna drop the exposure overall down on this image and we're gonna start to see a little bit richer color come back into the umbrellas in the back there. I've gone back minus 0.45%, so almost half a stop. But as you can see, we've definitely made her face much too dark. But that's okay, we'll get to that in just a minute. I'm gonna dial our highlights down just a little bit. As you can see here, our highlights are a little bit strong kind of on Ashley's chest and they're a little bit strong back here with the umbrellas. I usually don't drag my highlight slider all the way to the bottom and destroy all that information. So let's, let's you know, kind of ease that edit back just a little bit right there. All right, shadows, those can actually come down just a tad. Blacks can come down just a tad. And as we do that, we're gonna really enrich our color. Whites for me are gonna come up just a little bit. These are kind of the mid-tones and that's where her, the skin on her face is gonna to start to pop out a little bit. All right, so we've created a much more rich and dramatic looking image from when we started. But again, her face is way too dark. So let's grab our circular gradient tool and we will draw a basic circle around her face and we can use this to make a local edit to help bring these raw pixel data up in her face. So let's grab our exposure, bring that up just a little bit. If I drag it all the way, you can see I'm making a local edit. It's not affecting anything outside of the circle. Obviously that's a little too hot. So we're just gonna bring this up a little bit and get her skin tones back up to a normal level. That's pretty good right there. All right, I'm also going to create two more of these local edits around her eyes. So let's close this for a minute. We'll zoom in on this image. 
And as you can see, her eyes are a little bit darker than I would like to see them in a basic portrait. So let's move in back into our circular gradient filter. And I'm gonna create basically an eyeball sized shape right here. And we're just gonna use that to bring the exposure in her eye up a little bit. Again, all, all I'm affecting is what's inside the circle. Don't overdo it because you don't need to have weird glowing vampire eyes. So try to keep your edits nice and subtle. I'm gonna bring this up to about, eh, probably 0.5 looks good to me. We'll do the same for the other eye. The other eye is kind of trapped back in uh, sort of the shadow side of her face, so it doesn't need quite as much. You don't want to artificially enhance the brightness over here too much. So I think once again, we'll just bring this up 0.5 and that's a nice subtle edit, maybe a little bit more. Okay, not too much. All right, right around there. Looks good to me. Okay, so we'll close our circular gradient tool and we'll zoom back out to normal levels. And as you can see right now, we've brought the light up on Ashley's face a little bit and we've brought the light back in the background. We've balanced the equation a little bit nicer. I think that's a pretty good edit. And this is more than enough to get us rocking out in Photoshop. So on to the next image. We have almost an identical compositional shape. So probably the easiest thing for me to do here is to just hit this previous button and all of the images that we applied to our previous image will now come into this image. Now you gotta be careful when you do this because the local edits that you make, for instance, these little tabs that I've created for her eyes, are in the wrong place because Ashley has shifted positions ever so slightly. Now in this case, her eyes are more or less closed. So I don't need to have these things brightening up her irises and her pupils. So I'm gonna get rid of those. This, as you can see, has shifted over ever so slightly. So we're gonna move this to get it really much back on her face right there. And as far as the rest of the edits are concerned, I feel like that actually looks pretty good. So let's close this panel and this image is actually a hair too dark, so I'm gonna bring our exposure from minus 0.45, let's bring it to minus 0.2. That should brighten it up a little bit. That looks a little too much, so we're gonna go with minus 0.3, split the difference, and I think that's pretty good right there. Highlights still need to come down just a tad because they're a little bright on her nose, and I'm gonna bring these whites back to zero or minus two, that looks good. Okay, so that feels like a pretty good edit there. All right. Moving right along, now we're into our bonus pictures. All right, as you can see, the first thing that stands out to me is that the light on Ashley's face is a little bit overexposed. Her skin is looking a little hot. So let's go ahead and just drag the overall exposure down a bit. And as you can see, we're making the entire image a little bit darker. That's a pretty good start. Her skin is still a little hot, so let's get into our highlight region and let's bring those down a little bit. And now we can see that's really starting if we kind of drag the slider all the way to the right and then all the way to the left, you can see that's really starting to target that skin much more closely. So let's bring our highlights down just a little bit right there. And that's starting to feel like a pretty good edit to me. Okay, next. Ashley has very dark hair and it's we're starting to lose a little bit of the detail in her hair over here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start in with my local edits. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a circular neutral density filter and let's kind of make this roughly the shape of the side of her hair here. We'll move that into position and I'm just gonna basically bring the exposure for this region up a little bit. Again, it only affects what's inside the circle. You don't wanna overdo it because you don't wanna look like she's got a flashlight beaming on her head. But we do want to start to see a little bit of the detail in that hair because like I say, her dark hair tends to kind of drop away and disappear on us. All right, so that's a good edit there. The next thing I notice is this really big, almost on the verge of exposure burnout over here. You can see the sunlight is kind of hammering away down at the edge of the city building, whereas Ashley is in perfect shade. So we have a bit of a distracting blob of light over here. So the easiest way we can start to address this is to grab a graduated neutral density filter. I'm gonna grab this and just drag it over. And we're gonna start by pulling the exposure down a little bit. That kind of eases back on that massive exposure burn. Let's ease back on those highlights a little bit. And let's bring this over just a tad more to kind of help fill the scene in. And what I'm noticing over here is a lot of warm light. And what I wanna do is accentuate that warm light. I wanna bring it out a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab my color temperature slider and start to bring that up. As you can see, we've got warm light on the side. And I want to accentuate that warm light without making it look like a forest fire. So again, be subtle with your edits. Let's go about 25 points, give or take right there. And that's starting to look pretty good. 
Okay, now because we've changed things around a little bit, the overall image is starting to feel a tad dark to me, so I'm going to actually not have a minus 0.35 exposure. Let's go down to minus 0.15. That brightens the overall image up a little bit, and it allows the viewer to kind of really see those skin tones nicely. It also kind of brightens her eyes rather beautifully. So again, this is a pretty good looking edit. This will work nicely in Photoshop. So let's move on to our next image, which compositionally is very similar to the last one. So we can get ahead of the game once again by hitting the previous button, and it will apply all of our previous edits to this image. And we just want to make sure that our localized edits are in the right place. Ashley did shift over just a little bit so you can see how we need to move this over just a tad to make sure that it actually does kind of get into her hair. And this one's starting to look maybe a little brighter than we need it to. So let's dial this back down to about 0.8 just to be nice and subtle there. And all right, this is starting to look like a pretty good edit. Let's see here. Our graduated neutral density filter is over here. We can drop that back a little bit. As you can see, this is making the right side darker, and I do still like that effect in this image because I want my background to be darker than Ashley. That's gonna help lead the viewer directly to her. As a matter of fact, we can go ahead and throw another one right over here, kind of darken up that left side. Maybe not quite so much over there, but just a little bit, yeah, like so. And basically what we've done is we've created uh, darkness off to the right, created darkness off to the left. Ashley is brighter by comparison and therefore she attracts the most attention for the viewer, which is what we want. Moving right along, again, a very similar compositional shape as far as the image is concerned. So let's hit that previous button. All of our previous edits are gonna come into this image. And honestly, I think we're just about dead on with this one. The only thing we might need to change Let's go over to this guy, move him up just a little bit and angle him so that he's more affecting her hair. That's pretty good, I like it. So we'll close this back up. Maybe we'll bring the exposure back up to about zero just to give it that nice little final splash of brightness. And again, that's a great looking edit, I like it. Moving right along. We're mostly similar. She has, in fact, changed directions, although Ashley is, for the most part, still situated in about the same part of the frame. So let's see what happens when we apply our previous edits. Okay, now this is a good example. I can tell right now that my circular neutral density filter has actually hit her right in the face rather than on the hair. So this is one thing you gotta be careful about. If you do copy your edits from one image to the next, the localized edits that you specifically make are not necessarily going to line up with your previous composition. So let's grab this guy and move it over and we can rotate it so that it does still fit her hair. And that actually looks pretty good just like that. We are maybe a little bright. I'm gonna drop this down to 0.65 just so it's not super duper bright. All the rest of the stuff looks pretty good. Let's check out our graduated neutral density filters. This one can probably come over just a bit. This one come over just a bit as well. And all right, now we've got a pretty nice looking basic headshot using our previous edits. And last but not least, we have this sort of fun flirty little thing where she's kind of tucked into her sweater looking very extra cute. Let's go ahead and hit the previous button. We bring all of our previous edits in, and as you can see, once again, they are not lining up exactly, but that's okay. So let's grab our circular neutral density, and we'll move this back over to where it's kind of hitting her in the hair, where it's supposed to be. Maybe make that a little smaller. Kind of change up the angle a little. Oops, so you have created a new one. Hold on, let's delete that. Let's go back to our previous one. Right here. And I'd say that probably looks pretty good. All right, over to our graduated neutral density filters. This one here is creeping very strongly into her face, so we need to back this one off. Let's grab this guy here and just move that back so that that dark filter is not bleeding into her face. This one is maybe a little bit too short, so we can bring this one over just a tad. And that's starting to look pretty good. And I think I'm gonna close this panel and increase the overall exposure just a little bit. When you work outside, the sun tends to change around just a little bit. Maybe there's a cloud in the sky. Maybe not quite that bright. Let's go down to point two. And I think that's pretty good right there. Okay, let's get a look at these all together. Now that we've made our final edits, we'll go back through, starting with this one. 
Again, super vibrant, lots and lots of color. I will probably pull some of the color out of her skin in Photoshop because her skin looks a little hot. She looks like she might have spent a little bit too much time in the tanning bed here, which she definitely hasn't. But we want to make sure that we're not oversaturating skin because there's nothing, nothing worse than sunburned skin because you have too much color saturation in your file. Okay, again, that's a nice looking edit there. Coming back through, I like the way this one turned out. Got the subtle smolder going all on. I really love this image. I think we will drop into Photoshop later on and try to kind of make this a full smile with just lips so that we don't see her teeth there because we are again on the verge of, is it a, teethy, is it a toothy smile? Is it a not so toothy smile? Is it a sly smirk? I mean, I can't really tell what's going on. I love everything about this image, but we can reach in and kind of fix that a little bit later, which we'll definitely do in the next Photoshop document. A basic headshot looking pretty good. And finally, here's our fun, flirty image to round out the batch. So let's go back to our library. I'm going to select all of these images and I'm going to hit the export button. We will give them first and foremost a location. So let's see here. Let us choose a location. I go to my desktop. This is Ashley and Manitou. These are all going to be Photoshop documents. So I'm going to point them to my PSD folder. I'm going to choose that and we're gonna give them a name. This is gonna be Ashley and the Umbrellas. Call this plus bonus. So each image will have this particular name and that will differentiate them from all the other Photoshop documents that we've been exporting furiously out of Lightroom to help complete this tutorial. So the file needs a setting. This is gonna be a PSD, a Photoshop document. Again, Lightroom can, can create JPEGs, TIFFs, PNGs, or it can, you can even send out the original raw file. So in this case, we're gonna go with the Photoshop document. Our color space is gonna be Adobe 1998. That gives us the maximum amount of color gambit to be able to work with. Again, I tend to get in trouble when I talk about uh, the bit depth here. I export all of my portraits in eight bit color space just because that is more than enough to work these files. If we were doing big ticket landscape files that had lots of blue skies where we had very subtle gradients, 16 bit color is definitely the way you wanna go because that's where you start to see breakdown in your fine color tuning. But a 16 bit file is absolutely ginormous and for the purposes of our portraits, 8-bit color is going to be more than adequate. I know I'm gonna get in trouble with a lot of photographers by saying that, but you do you, man. Image sizing. I'm going to leave this section alone because Lightroom will natively default to the full size image. We have gigantic 50 megapixel files from our Canon 5DSR. They're big, they're beautiful. They give us a lot of pixel information to work with. So I'm going to leave this alone and export full size files. Okay, so we've told our pictures where to go. We've told them what to be named and we've given them a format and we've told them to go out at full size. So we hit the export button and boom, we have seven new images from our photo shoot getting sent over to Photoshop. In the next lesson, we will do some fine tuning, a little bit of frequency separation, skin retouching, and we're gonna do our best to make these images absolutely perfect. So we'll see you in the next lesson.